Welcome back to Dukas Copy TV. With me in the studio is Catherine Hill, an investment consultant who works with hedge funds and is also a member of an organisation called 100 Women in Hedge Funds, which has also recently raised over 300,000 Swiss francs for a local children's charity in Geneva. Catherine, welcome to the studio, firstly, and secondly, congratulations on raising such a huge amount for charity. Um, let's uh, start. Um, can I just first ask uh, you uh, to tell me a little bit about this organisation that you're a part of? Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I'm very happy that we raised over 300,000 francs for the local charity. 100 Women in Hedge Funds is a global organization of women who work in alternative investments, so hedge funds, private equity. And we have three pillars, mentoring, philanthropy, and education. And for philanthropy, we have three galas every year, one in New York, one in London, and one in Geneva. And in Geneva, we raise money specifically for a charity called All Special Kids, ASK in which uh, has summer camps for children with learning disabilities. So we're very proud of this and uh, we're also very lucky because Prince William is our patron uh, in London for the organization. Now Catherine, um, obviously this, the interview is predominantly here about hedge funds. We're looking at the hedge fund industry. Can we start with banks um, uh, first off? Um, I know that at the moment banks and hedge funds aren't necessarily seeing eye to eye if you like. Um, why is this? And uh, can you talk us to, through that uh, in relation to Basel III? Absolutely. Since the financial crisis, the banks have had to reorganize themselves. Uh, they are no longer allowed to have prop trading desks or hedge funds under their umbrellas. And these new regulations and legislation such as Basel III has uh, affected their business greatly. They have to carry more cash on their balance sheet in order to function. And how this affects hedge funds is quite detrimental. Hedge funds use banks or prime brokers in order to trade, borrow securities, and also borrow money. Well, if the banks have to carry a higher amount of capital on their balance sheet, that means it's uh, more expensive borrowing costs for the hedge fund. And because of that, also with this current environment where hedge funds aren't performing so well, not only do your costs of just running your business go up, but if your performance isn't good either, uh, that severely cuts into your profitability. You mentioned obviously um, hedge funds there. I mean, how well are hedge funds doing at the moment in, in light of that this year? Actually, they're not doing very well. So uh, if you look at HFR indices, for example, which uh, cuts across all strategies uh, and takes in their performance into account, you'll see that uh, the average hedge fund isn't even doing 7%, and it's December. So they don't have that much time. Uh, two of the best performing strategies, though, uh, this year happen to be emerging markets and convertible arbitrage, but even then, they're doing about average 5%. There are hedge funds doing better than that, but those would be individual managers. But over uh, across the board, most hedge funds are still not doing that well. And that means investors are going to be pulling out their capital. Also, what we've seen a trend this year is big uh, hedge fund managers who've been around for 20 years plus examples like George Soros, who've actually decided to quit the hedge fund business, give the money back to investors, and just form a family office to invest on their own. The family offices, um, can you tell us a little bit about family offices? Because um, I'm interested in the fact that you, I know that you have a network of investors. Um, all this must have affected family offices. So what are family offices and, and how has this affected them? A family office is usually uh, started by a high net worth individual or a wealthy family that wants to create their own uh, investment firm. So they will hire professionals to help them uh, deploy capital and also conduct research. Um, family offices, even during the financial crisis, were pools of capital and a lot of time they were just sitting on cash. They were disappointed in the hedge fund industry, they were disappointed in the stock market, so a lot of them pulled out their money and sat in cash. And now what you're seeing is a trend uh, among family offices is they want to invest directly. So instead of investing through a bank, instead of investing into a hedge fund, they've taken the reins back and decided, I want to invest directly on my own. This isn't directly into companies, into the markets, it could be distressed assets. Uh, and, and that trend I'm seeing internationally, not just in Europe, not just in the US, but these family offices are saying, I want to invest directly anymore. They're disappointed at hedge fund performance. They pay a lot of fees to be in the hedge fund. 
but also the banks have disappointed them because a lot of them had used private banks in the past and their private banker would suggest investments that the bank would profit from or they'd get commissions from, not necessarily the best investment for that investor. So these family offices are really going on on their own and investing directly instead of through a hedge fund or a bank. It's interesting. You've been noticing that a lot, presumably, in, in your network of investors. Catherine, thanks for that. Um, just ending, we, we've got a, um, obviously a traditional uh, question which we ask all our guests called the Dukas Copy question. Um, now, out of this selection um, of assets here, we've got real estate, equity, bonds, gold, cash, oil. If you had one million US dollars right now, where would you put it? Well, first of all, I'll tell you where I wouldn't put it, which is cash. I think that's a mistake. But where I think I would put it is actually real estate. I think there are really good opportunities out there. There are certain pockets and places of the world where actually real estate uh, is still quite depressed and you can pick up some great assets. Catherine, thanks very much for coming to the studio and sharing with us your thoughts today. Thank you. Uh, that's all we've got time for today on Dukas Copy TV. Stay with us throughout the day, though, for the latest updates. But until next time, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.